Greetings, and thank you for joining the JS Flipper Library team of Allen University as we present the making and digitizing of the W.B. Broughton Archival Collection. We'd like to thank the DLF and the HBU Library Alliance for inviting us to present to you today in this forum. We hope you enjoy our presentation. I am Carol L. Bowers, and I will be presenting today on foundation and digitalization. Hi, my name is Miss Courtney Rounds, and I'm going to be talking about delving into the past imperfect, which is about past perfect a software. Hi, I'm Miss Sloan Clark, and I'll be talking about allyship in Broughton Archives. So how this kind of began is we had a longtime archivist, Miss Wilhelmina Broughton, who retired a few years ago. And one of the things that happens, and I'm sure a lot of you are kind of part of this, is when you have these institutional memories, such as an archivist, after they leave, everyone else is kind of left in a lurch and has to figure out something to do. So that's kind of what this is about in our turning the archives into a more formalized archive after she left. And so she is our first campus archivist and she retired after 22 years of service. She has cool hair. She was a former student support service director. Um, she taught elementary education, mathematics, reading, social studies, children's literature, and supervised student teachers. She has a very nice family. Serves as the memory of the institution. Did we mention her cool hair? Compiled a publication listing 200 distinguished individuals who performed or spoken in Chappelle Auditorium prior to renovation. She left a legacy that will never be forgotten. Our history. Continuing in the legacy of Allen University in 2014, Allen University became one of the first HBCUs in Columbia to join the South Carolina Digital Library. We embrace the vision and the future of the JS Flipper Library through this initiative. And on behalf of Allen University and the JS Flipper Library staff, we offer a a very special thank you to Ms. Broughton, our first campus archivist, who accumulated most of the material in our collection. Our collection at a glance, we have yearbooks, marquees, artifacts, photographs, school catalogs, school bulletins, diplomas, presidential reports, and AME memorabilia, amongst other things. Allen University's digital collection can be retrieved directly through the university's webpage by going to allenuniversity.edu and going to the JS Flipper Libraries page. And from the JS Flipper Libraries page, you will see the digital collection. Also, you can access it directly through its host, scmemory.org. So there are two ways that you can access the library's webpage and how we compile and put together the information for the webpage, how we digitize the collection. We digitize the collection first by housing it on scmemory.org through content DM. The metadata standards that we use were the Dublin Core metadata standards. And if you would like to know more about the Dublin Core Metadata Standards, you can click on www.dublincore.org. And it will give you a lot of the specifications, all of the specifications and the criteria for Dublin Core's categories. Here you see in the Excel spreadsheet, we had to compile everything, the title, the administration of the work, the author of the work, the creator of the work, the contributors of the work, the publishing information, the date, the approximate date or era that the work was made, the sources of the work, the subject of the work, the description of the work, and much, much more. 
you'll see that we had to go through and we had to categorize the work itself in combination with the images that we were digitizing. We had to be very specific in our digital efforts for, the, for cataloging and digitizing the records. We had to make sure that everything was met to standard when we were going through the digital process. We had to make sure that all of our fields were in check as far as the time frame or dates, the location, and then the resolution. We had to make sure we saved the photographs and images under the 600 Paxil strength resolution, and then we had to save them to coincide with the names that are on the Excel spreadsheet. So everything had to go coincide in order for the metadata or the content underneath the script, underneath the image to connect directly to the image at hand. So if we look at browsing the collection, here are some of the pieces on the next slide that you will see when we browse the collection. You'll see that the collection, there are many unique items in the collection currently. And we'll see how the metadata on the left-hand side of the subjects matches with the pictures on the right-hand side. So we had to make sure we have the title, the date, who contributed the pictures and all of that great information so it can coincide. So when you're searching on the um, patron portal, that the administrative portal links behind work so that you can get the image or the content that you are searching for. So Ms. Broughton left a legacy for us. And now we'll see a little bit more about the archive and planning her legacy. Okay, so a plan to preserve her legacy. Again, after Ms. Broughton left, after 22 years of service, with her she took kind of this institutional record. She was the record of memory, which is great when Ms. Broughton is here and can answer questions, but for her, after ret her retirement, we had to come up with a plan. So what do we do now? Formalizing our archives. So we followed basic archival guidelines. One, we determined a physical space to hold the collection. Two, we created a collection policy to determine what the archives will collect, and also, just as importantly, what we will not collect. Um, I'm sure just like the rest of your spaces, you have very limited space as to what you can take, so it's important to not only note, okay, we can have these items, but we will not be taking them. Then we surveyed the current holdings and then cataloged and created a collection system. So we use PassPerfect. PassPerfect is a museum archival software. And why we chose this one? One, it's cost effective. Um, the basic model is under $900. It's got ease of use and it's very versatile. So this is our home screen page here and you can see how it's kind of divided up into sections. So our collections, we do have some objects. We do obviously have some photographs that you saw in the former presentation, and then we have our arch archives. So it has it nice and divided up that way for us. The other nice things about this is if you look here, we have contacts. You can put your contact information in um, for your donors, for your friends of the library. We have our temporary custo custody, accession, exhibits, incoming loans, outgoing loans, and deaccessions. So it has everything nice and kind of simplified for you here. Um, and it's pretty easy to use, pretty easy to teach other people how to use as well. Also, you can do your reports with it. So this is just kind of a general, <laughs> excuse me, our general page. You can see our collection is in the Wilhelmina Broughton archives, our object ID, the object name, you do an identity statement with it. Um, you can go through and tell the context, the structure, the conditions. Um, you go through and you can have multi-level linking of descriptions, the dates, all of that information. And then here you can see too, this is in the archives. If we had maps, if we have music collection or oral histories, this could all be divided up further. Just a little bit more on it here. Um, we can do our condition reporting and we can update those as well. So again, we can do maps, music, oral histories, we can customize things. We also, again, have physical items and objects. 
condition reports, and then also it says where our location is. So again, past perfect, while not you know, super high end, it's really good bang for your buck, especially if you're starting out and trying to formalize your archives, you get a lot with the product for the money that you spend. Yes, hello. Uh, my presentation is on Alley Ship and Alley Ship in the Broughton Archives. Alley Ship, what is Alley Ship? What does it benefit? Or how does it benefit archives? Allyship is a lifelong process of building relationships based on trust and accountability and consistency. Allyship benefits archives and allowing partnerships between the staff and researchers. Stakeholders are the recipients and users of the archives deliverables. Broad Archives has photos, documents, and other mem memorabilia about the history of Alley University its alumni and the way of the community the, that it surrounds the campus. Miss Broughton, she left the legacy. She left the time for us to formalize our archives, a time for us to digitize our archives and a time to share her legacy, our legacy, the legacy of Allen University with each of you here. We thank you for listening and for joining our presentation. If you need to contact us for more information, just feel free to visit Allen University's website, JS Flipper Library at Allen University. Once again, we thank the DFL and the HBCU Library Alliance for allowing us to participate here today. And a special thank you to Ms. Rounds and Ms. Clark for joining in and presenting with me. Thank you. <laughs>